What's going on guys, Stix here with the Token Minorities bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO and today I am bringing you a standard deck centered around the combination of Zoroark, GX, and Meg Cargo. And yes, I'm finally getting around to doing this deck. And before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, it helps us out a ton and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys. And as for the question of the day, so I've been testing this out a little bit and I've, and I know that a lot of people are very hyped about Zorark McCargo just because the synergy is clear. McCargo has the ability where once during your turn, you may search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck and then put that deck that card on top of your deck has the obvious synergy with Zorark where you trade and just immediately get two cards. Uh, so it's, I mean, the synergy is clear put mag cargo down on the bench zork is able to trade to get whatever card mag cargo puts there and really it's just kind of a okay what card do i need in this situation okay mag cargo is going to get it for me so the synergy very very clear and we all know how powerful zork is uh in the format well just in general because i mean it's an insanely spammable card powered up with two energies all that good stuff so i mean it's just very very good combination of cards but my question is what do you guys actually think about it as a deck? Now, as for me, okay, first I want to preface this by saying I have only played a couple hours with this deck. I know that there are people that have played like weeks, like they've tested this out, they've tested different builds, they've tried different tech cards. So uh, in respect to those guys, I have not played nearly as much with this deck. What I have is what I built, I tested for a little while, and now I'm bringing you this video. So it's only about a couple hours of testing with this deck. But what I found, in my opinion, ooh, my trade got complete, I'll have to check that out later. But what I have found is that when I have been trying this deck out, it just seems like without Puzzle of Time, without like special charge, first of all, it runs low on energy very, very quickly. Second of all, it just seems like there is so much work for such really relatively little payout just because each turn you have to think about, okay, what am I going to put on top of my deck with Mag Cargo? What resource do I need in this exact situation to get me a KO? How am I best able to handle my opponent's Pokemon? Yada, yada, yada. It's just kind of a, okay, there is so much thinking into each turn. Like, okay, like I said, put the card on top of the deck. Okay, now which of my resources do I get rid of to get that card? What card can I hopefully draw into? Like if I need three pieces instead of just two, what card uh, can I potentially just draw into? So it's really just a lot of thinking and a lot of like, really just a ton of thought for this to work as simply a more consistent Zorark deck. And don't get me wrong, Zorark's amazing, just being able to basically two-shot everything in the game. But at some point, two-hit KOing just isn't really enough or just does not seem like it can be enough. So I'm I'm of the opinion that without things like Puzzle of Time, because that would make Zorark Meg Cargo insane, but otherwise I just, I really don't see it that great now that it is entirely possible and actually is more likely probable that I just don't have the list for maximum effect, which is, yeah, like I said, it's highly possible and more than likely probable. But that being said, I don't know, I've tried it out, tested it out, and it just seems like it is a lot of work for it to simply just work like a more consistent Zorark deck. I feel like Zorark would rather have a big heavy hitter behind it to support it throughout the game, whereas with Mag Cargo, it's literally just being like, okay, well, I need the Guzma in this situation, I got the Guzma, I need the Acerola, I got the Acerola. So, I mean, it's definitely very, very good and very consistent, but the, at the end of the day, it's just a straight-up Zorark attacking deck. It has no other, like, big attackers in the wings. It has tech attackers in Deoxys and Oranguru, but other than that, it is just Zorark attacking Zorark all the way. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think of Zorak Mag Cargo as a deck in the current standard format? I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are because, I mean, I feel like my opinion is very, very uh, controversial and it's kind of a result of me not having as much time spent using this deck as other people have. But yeah, I talked for way too long. I'm very sorry about that. But let's just go ahead and get into the numbers of Mons and why we're using it. First of all, we are running a copy of the profound of the resource management Oranguru. I was looking at the attack, not the actual attack that we use it for. Put any three cards from your discard pile on the bottom. Well, put three cards from your discard pile 
on bottom of your deck in any order. This is our method of recursion for special energies mainly just because, I mean, that's really what you use it for, but in a pinch it can be used for anything else just because special charge is unfortunately not in this format and otherwise this deck just relies on 4 DCE and if we can't rely on the DCE then we just really will lose the game so that Oranguru is mainly the method of recursion for the DCEs but it can be used uh, other ways as well. 4-4 four, four of Zorua and Zork just because that is exactly what this deck is centered around. If we didn't have Zork this wouldn't be the deck so we want to run absolute max numbers of those. Only 2-2 two, two of Slugma and Mag Cargo. I could definitely see running more of them like a 3-3 three, three line but 2-2 two, two, I tested it out and it worked for me well enough like it was actually able to pretty consistently get two McCargo up yeah that does leave you susceptible to prizes but in the beginning of the game you usually only have one you only have two after you've taken a couple prizes so yeah you can get a can go 3-3 three, three to consistently get the uh two two or consistently get two mag cargo set up but I found that like one or two like two definitely is twice as good as one but at the same time, like, I found that, okay, I just need that one card this turn, and the other one is kind of like gravy, so that's why I went with 2-2. Two, two. One of the Deoxys attack for Psychic, where DCE does 20, uh, 20 damage plus 20, basically the just the Mewtwo, just basically the Evolution's Mewtwo, a new version of that. And then two Lele for starting off Lele into Pokemon Fan Club or Lele into Apricorn Maker, if that's how you choose to go about using this deck. And then as for the item cards, got one counter catcher just because i mean if this deck falls behind at all you can easily put counter catcher up to the top of the deck this deck's able to run uh, quite a few one ofs or low counts of certain tech cards just because mag cargo with zorark allows you to get those techs when you need it so it's very 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 clutch and also uh counter catcher if you end up pulling ahead is just a card that you can trade away so it works out very very nicely to enhanced hammer as this current standard format is very much around dces there are dces absolutely everywhere uh and then enhanced hammer allows us to get the leg up on opposing zorks for example but other decks that run dces as well escape rope because floatstone is not a thing unfortunately so we need ways of getting slugma out of the active spot that does not include necessarily guzma or even worse uh discarding a dce to field blower to get rid of choice bands and other items that could be annoying for us to max potion now this might seem very very weird especially because we are running uh dces and only four of them so you have to be very very careful with how you run max potion like definitely think twice about running it but in some situations it's just invaluable you don't want to have to pick up your zork with acerola you just need that extra damage worn off of your zork or of said zork so it's very nice and also if your opponent tries to guzma around and hit like your try to strand a Zorark that doesn't have any energy on it, then Max Potion can be a way to work around that as well. Two Nest Balls, uh, two Timer Balls, and four Ultra Balls as the search methods. Now, I would like to point this out now, as I could do it now or when I'm talking about the supporters, but I might as well do it now. One thing that I have been seeing a lot of people liking to do is instead of Pokemon Fan Club, putting Apricorn Maker there, and I completely understand that. I completely understand why Apricorn Maker would be used in that situation. I, I think I've gone on this rant before, have I? It's because, I mean, it thins your deck out more earlier, like you just get more cards out of your deck, it's less of a dead card late game, all that good stuff. But for me, with Zorark, like I'm sure that I have said before, I do like having... Yeah, I definitely said this in the Bennett video. But I do like having the extra cards late game as trade fodder, as less resources that I have to get rid of to trade. So that's why I prefer uh, Pokemon Fan Club without Apricorn Maker. But definitely try that out if that is your cup of tea. One Palpad to reuse supporters, put them back into the deck if we need them. Two Rescue Stretcher for Pokemon Recursion. Uh, two Devour Field just to increase the damage done by Zork, potentially help it hit magic numbers. Because I believe with a Choice Band, Devoured Field, and Kikui, you're able to hit for 180 damage, which is... Not as much of a magic number as it used to be, but it still is very, very solid. To Acerola to kind of do the max potion thing uh, without getting rid of the oh-so-precious DCEs. 4-4 four, four of Cynthia and Guzma, just lines I'm comfortable with, and especially in this format, like, I just, I immediately put 4-4 four, four of Cynthia and Guzma just as my default supporters, and then I fill in around that. To Judge, as Judge does not hurt us in this deck, thanks to Zork and especially Mag Cargo, because we can be like, okay, let's Judge. And now let's get a card that we absolutely need, or the one card that we need. So very, very strong in combination with those two. 
Pokemon Fan Club for starting off. Like I said, Kikui for boosting the damage on Zork. We're actually running a couple Kikui because that damage, it can be vital in a lot of situations. For Choice Band to boost our damage output, and then for DCEs, as that's exactly what this deck runs on. So, yeah, um, that's the deck. I've talked for way too long. Let's just go ahead and see this deck in action. Alrighty, we have found one against uh, Cyclo 1 with a, it was like a water, grass, electric, and then, was it, did I see normal in there? There might have been normal, I don't even know. But there's a whole lot of different types of my opponent was running. We start off with actually a pretty solid hand, because what I can do is start with Deoxys. Deoxys is fine. Uh, there's probably a Psychic in there if I did not say that. Uh, we start with Deoxys. Deoxys is fine. Uh, this is Glycopod Frogadier, and we are getting... Or Glycopod... Not Glycopod Frogadier. Glycopod... Glycopod... I'm just... I can't talk. Uh, Glycopod and Greninja. And wow, this hand is... Pretty amazing. So I'm really hoping my opponent doesn't end or judge me out of it, because I'd really, really like to keep all these cards as... I'll be able to get another Zerua and a Micargo up immediately. He is just going to retreat into his Latios, and if he plays a DCE, I'll be able to knock it out. Turn one with Deoxys, which he actually does, so this is kind of sort of amazing for me. Because what I can do, and I even top deck into another Zerua, so honestly, this is like, this is the best start I could hope for with this deck. So what I'm going to do is Fan Club for Zerua and a Slugma, play those down. I have two Zorark and a Mag Cargo in my hand for next turn. So let's just go ahead, Psychic up his Latios, knock it out, and yeah, I mean, we're just... Uh, there isn't much of a better turn that you could have asked me. Like, if you would have told me, like, what's your ideal turn one, this probably would have been it. The only other thing was maybe uh, I'd like to have a like to have another Slugma down. But, I mean, if you said, yeah, you're going to get three Zerua and a Slugma, you didn't have to play a Lele, and you're going to have two Zorok and a Macargo in your hand for next turn, I'd be like, ha, you are lying to me. There is no way I could get a hand that good in the beginning. But, I mean, lo and behold, we end up doing that. So he is just going to first impression me for nothing. Knocking out his Latios meant that he could not start on the bench, which is great. And now what I'm able to do, wow, let's even get another Zorark. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Judge and the Lele. I think I'm going to try to keep the Kakui, as that will, hmm. So if I, let's see, if I get another Pokemon, yeah, I mean, if I got another Pokemon and a Choice Band, I could have played the Kakui down and taking the knockout but what i think the play is i think i want to enhance hammer actually yeah let's go ahead and grab the enhanced hammer so i can get rid of that aim rainbow 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 energy so i can't so he can't like cross and cut me let's get rid of the deoxys just because i'm gonna have to two shot this guy anyway and wow, I even get the Rescue Stretcher, so that works as well. Let's go ahead and... Do I want a hammer? Or do I want to just get rid of the hammer? Um, because I can't... Yeah, because I can't play the Kikui this turn... Oh boy, this is not going... Not doing much for me at all. So let's actually just go ahead and grab the Deoxys. That way I'm doing 100 damage to where I can two-hit KO this guy. Yeah, that I really just drew into... After the amazing first turn, just haven't really drawn into too much good stuff this second turn and then let's enhanced hammer and i think hold off on getting rid of the max potion or getting rid of the guzma i want to keep the guzma in case my opponent tries to retreat out of there to where he cannot be he cannot be ko'd this coming turn so yeah i'm definitely gonna want to keep the guzma around and the max potion because he will have to two shot me and he is gonna uh start evolving the frogadier that is fine We'll float stone up the Glycopod. Um, let's see if my opponent does end up getting a Glycopod. 
Like, that's what he needs. He needs Glyce Pot and Energy. And he must not have because my opponent does just go ahead and scoop. So we are able to take that game and we do complete the daily challenge that I started like a week and a half ago. I don't even remember when I started that. But yeah, are able to take the win right there. I mean, Deoxys put in the work early and Zorik and Makargo were set up to start to do work later. So... I mean, very quick game, showed off what happens when this deck starts off amazingly. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and try to find another one that's hopefully a better one with this deck. Alrighty, we have found another one against uh, Kim Kamilka. What, what was even? I don't even. Uh, Kamilka, my, Kamilka Mychek, uh 11. That might be... Honestly, that might just be the name if you... Uh, that's kind of a complicated last name, but I mean, I'm one to talk. I have one of the most complicated last names that I've ever seen. It took me until like second grade to actually learn how to spell it, mostly because there's not a single vowel in my last name until the very end. But I digress. We are up against a deck with, uh, looked like Metal, Psychic, Water, and Normal. So really, I mean, it's a Metal deck, obviously. Like, that's going to be the predominant type. And okay, so I start off with three of my four energy in my opening hand. So at the very least, I know that I'm not going to have... the very least, I know I'm not going to have uh, many DCEs prized. I mean, the most I can have prized is one, so that's something, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, either way, I mean, it's just kind of... I wish that those were like... I wish I started all four Zerua in my hand. That'd be really nice. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, my opponent does start with Cosmog. I can definitely work with that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, play down the Slugma, play down the DCE, just because, I mean, that's really doesn't matter all that much. And then let's just play down a Zerua and pass the turn right there. So, I mean, at the very least, I still got a Zerua active. A Zerua and Slugma on the bench, and it's something that I can it's something that I can work around for a future turns, so I really don't have to be overly concerned about my setup. Uh, but seeing that he does have Cosmog and seeing that this is a metal deck, I'm instantly realizing that this is a Solgaleo deck, which is very, very, very not good. As I'm going to have to two-hit KO those things, and they can Oko me. So, yeah, very not good. Um, but what I'm going to do is probably just... Probably just Ultra Ball for a Lele, all things considered. Because what it'll allow me to do is get a full bench, which then will let me... Um, hmm. Yeah, it gets me a full bench, which lets me one-shot the Oranguru, which lets me take a prize. So that would be... That'd be pretty significant. Uh, yeah, I think I think that is going to definitely be something I would like to do at the very least. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's just go ahead and Ultra Ball for a Macargo. This way I don't have to play down the Lele. Uh, and also, I mean, like, I can always just Macargo for... Yeah, I can always just Macargo for a... for the fan club. But at the same time, I wouldn't be able to Kakui. So, I don't know if that was a good play or not. So, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and... What do I want to put on top of the deck? I actually think... I want a Guzma. Yeah, let's grab Guzma and hope. Or do I want to escape rope into Guzma? But then I... Mm. This is where I need two Mekargo. Because, like, I want to... I want to do that, but at the same time, like, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think what I should have done is Ultra Balled for the Lele to, yeah, is Ultra Balled for the Lele so that I could uh, get the, well, I mean, I get the Lele anyway. So, I mean, I won't be able to knock out the Cosmogs, which is what I really wanted. Like, if I had a DCE, if I got a DCE somehow, then that would have then that would have, yeah, that would have really, really been perfect because I would have been able to knock out a Cosmog. But as it stands, um, there's only, well, I mean, there's another Mercargo in the deck. I have one already down. So what I'm going to do is just grab, grab another Zerua and, yeah, grab a Mag Cargo, so, or grab a Slugma so that I can potentially get a, another Mag Cargo, knock out the Oranguru, and then, 
yeah, let's take our prize and then just hope we can hope we can do something from here. Uh, but yeah, so this is actually looking really, really nice because I'm going to be able to get hopefully another Zorark and another Makargo this coming turn. But my opponent does Heavy Ball for a Solgaleo. So odds are if they Heavy Ball for the Solgaleo, yeah, we're going to see the Rare Candy into the Solgaleo. So, I mean, that's a kind of expected my opponent is going to be able to soul burst to get a bunch of energy on board no way oh my gosh my opponent had double solgaleo double rare candy that's insane that is absolutely crazy and that is also crazy bad for us because that is two solgaleos yeah that's two solgaleos that just um <laughs> oh boy two solgaleos that are completely set up and yeah um oof but let's timer ball see if we can get a heads we do i'm gonna grab another mag cargo just because i mean this is this is bad this is really really bad uh oof because i mean solgaleo is going to be knocked out really like solgaleo is gonna be knocked out in two hits so this is this is, yeah, and he's going to be able to one-shot all my Zoroarks, so this is not not a good start. Not a good start at all. This is looking really, really bad. But, I mean, at the same time, with the two Mag Cargos, I can at least get myself a... I can at least get myself a Choice Band. Um, let's smooth over, put another Zorark at the top of the deck. And get that set up at the very least. So, I mean, like, really, I'm just going to kind of hope that my setup will be sufficient to deal with all of these like to deal with the absolute insane amount of soul glaive. So I'm gonna keep the Zerua, get rid of the max potion because I mean I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be living through hits anyway. And then let's just riotous beating, put it in range of another riotous beating next turn hopefully. And then then just go from there and pray. Um <laughs> So I'm not sure. So my opponent should just attack with his active. Let it get. Wait. That is a big, big choke by my opponent. Holy crap. I think they just let me back in the game. Because what my opponent should have done was knock me out. I would have had to promote another Zorark. Uh, and that Zorark would have. Yeah, they would have had to promote another Zorark. That Zorark would have finished off the Solgaleo. And then it would have would have knocked me. Uh, and then uh, his fresh Solgaleo would have knocked me out. So he would have taken four prizes and had a fresh Solgaleo. So, whoo, yeah, by my opponent getting rid of all the energy on his fresh Solgaleo and keeping his damaged Solgaleo, that instantly opens up the plays for... Uh, that instantly opens up the Guzma play to get rid of all his energy. And instead of going for the Zork, I think... Well, going for the Zorark directly, I think what I'm going to do is get a Field Blower. Because, I mean, I have I have the Ultra Ball. Like, I have the Ultra Ball to be able to grab that last Zorark if I want. Um, the Enhanced Hammers are doing me no good in this matchup. And, ooh. Well, crap. I wish I had no... I wish I had remembered the Counter Catcher before I... I wish I'd remember the counter catcher before I grab before I like set myself up to where a Guzma would be the only thing. But I mean, regardless, I'm still able to Guzma up his Solgaleo and knock it out to where my opponent is now out of energy. So I mean, that's good at the very least. But at the same time, it's kind of like, uh, well, not the greatest. But yeah, now his Solgaleo's his Solgaleo is without energy. It's fresh, but it's without energy. So this is. This is looking really, really good. Because my opponent will have to manually attach. And if he manually attaches, then he can't... Yeah, if my opponent manually attaches, he cannot max potion up because that will waste time. And eventually, I'll be able to... Oh, okay, he's getting the... He's getting the Prism Star Solgaleo. That makes sense. And then he's probably going to try to get a metal energy, I would think. Huh. 
So this is where the battle really starts to get interesting. Because, okay, he's going to Guzma up the Lele. That's fine. I was probably... I was thinking he was going to switch his Solgaleo out this coming turn anyway. Ooh. Okay, well, that complicates things a little bit. Well, I mean, I get the Guzma, so that's a nice at the very least. Um, but what I'll have to do is get an escape rope at the same time. Yeah, so let's go ahead and use my first Medcargo to get the escape rope. Trade, get rid of the Judge, because I don't want to give my opponent a new hand. I mean, I'm kind of just working on them being stuck. So then let's escape rope into... I mean, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be Guzmaing up his Solgaleo anyway. So yeah, this is just getting very tricky because I want to start pressuring the Solgaleo to where I'll be two-shotting it. Um, but my opponent is... Yeah, my opponent's not getting much going, apparently. So that's... Some, I mean, that's just what we have to work off of. I mean, yeah, my opponent 100% choked in how he played his Solgaleo early on. Like, that gave me... That gave me the chance to be in this game. That gave me the chance to knock out his Solgaleo that had energy on it. And so, yeah, it does promote the Aranguru. That's fine. What I'm going to do is use my second Meg Cargo for a choice ban. That way, I'm guaranteed able to two-hit KO his Solgaleo with, Riotous be with Ri choice banded Riotous Beating into regular Riotous Beating. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Zork from my discard pile and put it into my hand and evolve it. Because, I mean, this way, like, I still have another Zork in the deck. There's a Zeru in the discard pile, too. But again, I can try to play around that. Let's bring up his Solgaleo and then just not, or not knock that thing out. I wish I could knock that thing out. But get very good damage on it with Riotous Beating to where he can't... I mean, he max potion, so that's something. Uh, so, kind of a wasted turn, ish. Ah, uh, yeah, it was a. Wa well, I guess. Well, I mean, I would have, I could have knocked out the Registeel. Or not the Registeel. He just played down the Registeel. Sorry, I could have knocked down the Oranguru. Knocked down, knocked out. Wow, I'm just sorry. This is like, this deck requires so much thinking and like careful like careful examination of like each turn to where i'm like i'm really trying to provide a good narration but at the same time i'm trying to think out okay what do i need to do this turn okay he's going to radiant star corona impact he needs a choice band and a kukui to knock me out um with radi with uh corona impact but he's not even but he's not even putting the energy onto the Solgaleo. So what this means, I want to make sure that I have the Guzma sufficient to win this game. So the fact that I get that Pal Pad is actually amazing. Able to put two Guzmas back in this deck because, I mean, before I drew that Pal Pad, I only had two Guzmas to work with for the rest of the game. But with that Pal Pad, I now have four Guzmas. That will be, that will be plenty for me to be able to take out what I need to. And now that he has energied up his Solgaleo, I am 100% going to bring that sucker up with my Guzma. And actually, the fact that I draw into my DCE is fantastic as well because that's one less thing that I have to smooth over for because what I needed this turn was Guzma into Choice Band into DCE. But since I was able to draw into the DCE, then I don't have to smooth over and I can Guzma, I can smooth over for just Guzma and Choice Band. So it was one of those things that like, I mean, I've been thinning my deck well enough to where I should be getting these types of draws at this point in the game. But it's still just nice when it does work out that way. Cause I mean, we all have those times where we just, we just don't draw. We don't draw into the stuff that we really want. We don't draw into the stuff that we need, but what this will allow me to do 
is Riotus beating the Solgaleo. Yes, he can knock out a Zork, but at the same time, it is in range of being knocked out by another Riotus beating. He's going to Choice Band up the Registeel. That's fine. Um, Iron Head will be a 2-hit KO on Lele and Zork because of that Choice Band. So that's something, but at the same time, like I still have smooth. I have two smooth overs, and I have two trades even after he knocks out this active one. So I still should be in a good enough position to where I'm going to be able to win the game regardless. So he does take two prizes. That's fine with me. Let's promote the Zoroark, which will be able to knock out the Solgaleo. I top deck into another Guzma. So what I think I'm going to do is smooth over. Smooth over. Let's grab. How do I want? What do I want to do? Do I want to grab the Kikui? Because the Kikui will allow me to... Yeah, I think the Kikui is going to allow me to knock out... The Kikui, if I have a full bench, will allow me to knock out the Registeel. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Max Potion, because at this point in the game, really don't need it. And then let's smooth over probably for... Do I want DC or do I want the Rescue Stretcher to get another Zerua? I think at this point... So I can always just smooth over next turn for for the DCE. I think getting another, I think getting a Zerua will probably be no, no, no. This is a great game. Please do not dis. Thank you. Okay, I was about to say this has been a really great game. So please do not disconnect me. But yeah, getting another Zerua set up for a potential third Zorark once again and I even top deck into the Zorark but again I mean my deck is so thin right now I should just be getting good stuff uh, let's grab that Zerua play it down and then save the Kikui and the Guzma for later let's just go ahead and knock out his Solgaleo take two more prizes and now I should honestly be in a spot where I will be able to win the game no matter what my opponent does just because i mean i'm going to have two smooth overs and two trades my opponent has no way of stopping that whatsoever i'm going to have access to both of those which will allow me to get the cards that i need to win the game so i mean like smooth over into like a dce and a DCE and a Kukui. Like if my opponent somehow ends if my opponent ends me down to one, still have two cards, still have two trades. I mean I will have plenty of stuff, and I can always just Guzma up the Oranguru if that's what my opponent ends up deciding to do. So yeah, I'm in a I'm in a spot, I'm in a checkmate position, and because my opponent was not able to end me out of this hand, I don't even have to I mean I have to smooth over for a DCE. But other than that, there's really there's really nothing that I need to worry about. Just he's getting more energy on board, that is fine. Let's just evolve Zorak for the for the heck of it. Let's smooth over, put that DCE onto the top of the deck, and then use one of my three trades to grab that. Which will allow me to knock out the Oranguru this or this turn and win the game. So whew, that was a very, very clutch game. I mean, like in all honesty, my opponent played that very, very poorly uh, with the Solgaleo play. The fact that they, instead of just knocking me out with their damaged Solgaleo, they hit me with their fresh Solgaleo, which allowed me to knock out, knock out their other built-up Solgaleo. So, I mean, I think that that was definitely very, very large choke by my opponent, and that definitely did cost them the game. But, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was uh, alluding to in the deck preview or in the deck list is that Zorak McCargo is so much work and so much thought each turn for the deck to really just work like a generic Zorak deck. I mean, yeah, you have the ability to search out any card in the deck, but that doesn't change the fact that Zorak misses out on one hit KOs. Like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I'm mentally drained after that game, just every single turn thinking, okay, have to smooth over, have to trade, have to smooth over again, have to trade again, like just, it's just thinking out each turn so in depth to make sure that I get everything right 
and I'm still only able to hit for like 100 and like 150, 160 damage, 180 damage at the absolute most. Like, I don't know. Just doesn't seem worth it to me, but I mean, it still works. So hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.